hello and welcome to jasonnewland.com my name's jason and this is a healing hypnosis session just for you now recently i haven't really done many hypnosis sessions with a camera I film when we do it uh, I've kind of opted for just recording my voice and then putting a picture on or um, something like that and part of the reason is because the microphone that I have is um, better than the microphone I have with the webcam although I'm trying to use a microphone at the same time as the webcam so uh, hopefully it will be okay so just kind of playing around with it the other reason I've decided to do a session with you know showing me is uh, because I get requested people request it people ask me you know to show myself and do a video of me I'm not quite sure why but some people prefer it uh, maybe it's easier for people to close their eyes when they've got my face on the screen it's like okay I'll close my eyes and the rest of it's much easier for them I don't know <laughs> but so ba basically really this is just a, a hypnosis session it's kind of also like a a positive you could say motivational you could even say spiritual I mean I guess there's lots of different words that you could use to describe these healing hypnosis sessions and I've done a few of them now and I've been doing them pretty much daily as well uh, so I'm quite pleased with how it's going it's a work in progress and these sessions I'm thinking will be turned into a book at some point uh, they're actually being transcribed as we speak well not as we speak but you know at some point so I guess I'm feeling the need to introduce myself because I'm on camera as opposed to just a voice um, you know hidden away behind a picture on a screen so my name's Jason I provide all the hypnosis sessions um, on my YouTube channel and also you know on my website and yeah, yeah etc um, I've got a YouTube video channel and a Vimeo you a website as well um, also got a podomatic podcast um, all those links are below the video and yeah so uh, I do advise that you only ever listen to my voice or watch my videos when you can safely close your eyes that's actually the most important thing out of everything so I guess close your eyes would be the first thing to do and I'm gonna close my eyes as well because I don't really like looking at myself either I much prefer to just have my eyes closed it's kind of my favorite state in fact to just have my eyes closed and just be in touch with how I feel it's one of my favorite positions <laughs> I don't necessarily mean just sitting down but There's limited options when you go your eyes closed to what you can do, I know. 
Sometimes I'll lie down, sometimes I'll sit down. I like to have the window open to let some breeze come in. I've got it closed at the moment in the hope of blocking out some of the sounds from outside, but <sighs> doesn't mean there won't be any. It's a Saturday morning, well it's midday now, it's 12, 12 o'clock on a Saturday. There's more than likely going to be people around, either within the building or outside. So this isn't about silence. This is about more than that. This is about being alert, being aware. being with ourselves and sharing that experience sharing it with others with those we think about in our minds with me because we're both doing it at the same time sharing it with others that are also watching this video maybe at exactly the same time that you do and different times also but you shared an experience you shared the words you shared the sound does that make sense you shared something something that can't be taken away something that it sinks into your mind that's just the way it is it's not necessarily a good thing or a bad thing it's just we are affected by what we hear so we can be we're not always affected by it but by making changes by allowing those sounds in the background which you'll hear now it's fine because it means you're alive it means that this is just the way things are And when you hear my voice and those words go into your mind and I'm hoping that the words that I do say are positive and uh, of a healing nature that is my intention so in that way you'll get affected differently to how you would be affected if I was coming on here um, ranting about something or moaning about something so instead I'm talking softly and I don't know what I'm gonna say next I honestly don't know and with these sessions I've noticed that I seem to focus either on how I'm feeling maybe on the relaxation the physical healing sensations that can spread through your body and your mind or thinking about other things maybe that I've noticed that people have said to me or something that I've read or something that I've seen or heard which has triggered a response of wanting to help you know that need to 
to make a difference and to help that person and to reach out and to do something practical or even if it's just to say a kind word to do something so this is how I put these sessions together or I would say this is how I construct them but they're not constructed they are in a sense invented or created on the spot in the moment it's like a wave and I just I wait for the wave of emotion that is suitable for this particular subject which is suitable for you and me and this video something that can make a difference hopefully which is why I do these is to make a difference I'm not here to wear to win any you know awards for hairstyles best hairstyle on the internet I'm probably not going to win that maybe best beard mm -hmm. so I guess the question on this session for me is what does healing mean to you because I think that's a question worth asking what does it mean to you what does healing mean to you does it mean physical healing does it mean you know literally like a, a cut physical cut in your skin so there's a wound and then the blood moves from your body through your veins to that part of your body and then heals that part of your body by sending nutrients and anaesthetizing and cleaning cleansing that part of your body you know causing that part of your body to be sensitive so that you're careful with that part of your body and then covering that part with a layer a layer of protection like a scab so that it's protected so it can then heal underneath it's as if you can feel the healing happening in the very moment because maybe sometimes that might be where we get it wrong with things like using words like pain at a time after maybe an operation or you know some medical procedure or an injury which is healing then maybe we need to not you know rename that word from being pain to being healing 
So that physical sensation that you experience is the sensation of healing occurring and happening within your body. In fact, it's kind of a joyful experience when you think about it. I may not physically f feel joyful, but it's not the physical experience that has the effect on you. It's your emotional and mental reaction to the physical experience that affects your mood and, you know, how you feel. So healing, I guess, can take many forms. I wonder what it would be like if, you know, maybe someone had a broken leg and, and they were going, oh, you know, they were kind of holding it, like, oh, wow. And someone said to them, what's wrong? Are you in pain? And the person says, no. I'm in healing. It's okay. This is good. This means it's healing. If you cut your hand with a, I don't know, piece of paper even, you know, like a paper cut, by accident of course, it can be like, ow, it could be painful. But then, once you know it's starting to heal, you can think of it in a different way. Oh. It's not painful. It's healing. In the same way when you're tired. Maybe... Maybe we should get rid of the word sleeping. Replacing that with the word healing. Imagine how that would be with our communication with ourselves and with each others. You know, you get to work or you see a friend in the morning or whenever and they say, how are you doing? They say, yeah, I'm fine. I had a good heal last night. I healed really well. Feeling good. Healed really well. How did you heal last night? Was your healing okay? You didn't get enough time healing. Or maybe you need to get a bit more time tonight. Maybe you didn't need as much time as you thought. Maybe you did more healing than you realized. Can't wait to get to bed and do some healing. Because the healing starts as soon as you decide in your mind and just acknowledge, I guess. It's kind of agreeing and accepting that that's what sleeping is. It's healing. Healing your body, healing your mind. And I suppose It's quite a nice idea to carry around because everything, every thought, every so-called rule, 
every so-called law, every so-called uh, moral decisions or moralistic views, commandments, whatever they be, ethics, they're all ideas. Ideas of maybe how to live a happier life or some, I guess, are ideas so that other people can be in control of others. That's, uh, I would say that's probably a fact. So, when we move away from superstition, we move away from ritual and, you know, the old ages, the past, and just be with who we are now, to be real, you know, just be ourselves, to not get caught up in these old, outdated views and opinions and to look inside and just kind of ask yourself is this me is this really me I don't mean is this me in the mirror oh no where's all my hair gone I look like Jason no it's TV, you know, it's, it's a YouTube video. This isn't you to me. What I mean is, the questioning, I think, is worthwhile. Questioning some of the opinions, maybe, and some of the ideas that maybe you might have. And you might feel, you know, from the first instance that they are your ideas and they're your opinions and that's what you believe and etc blah 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 but when you look closer at them maybe they're not your ideas at all maybe they're just prejudices and limited thinking that's been passed down to you or that you've absorbed from the environment that you're in whether it's from the news the newspapers from teachers at school friends family who knows and that kind of i think there's that change occurs when you realize that that's not really what you believe you know you, you believe in maybe peace and love and kindness and you know maybe you were never able to express that before because you might have lived in a macho environment where you know, the, the ideal was to be tough and strong and manly or uh, maybe the, you know, if you were a man, of course, or even if you're a woman, there's some places where um, everyone's expected to be strong and tough. Or maybe if you've been expected to be at home raising children one after another. and to not have your own opinion maybe and that's the accepted way to be and it's not that there's abuse going on it's just that that's an accepted way of living and you might actually be happy like that but i just wonder is happiness 
you've got happiness and you've got choice. So if all you eat for your dinner is pizza, you might be happy eating pizza. But I think it would be nice if you get an opportunity to see that there's other food there because you might not be aware that you know there's other food available and you might have been raised to just eat that particular type of food and once you realize there's other food available you may still decide to stick with the food that you like you might still decide to just eat pizza but at least you've got the option at least then you know it's okay. At least then that frees your mind a bit, opens your mind a bit more to the possibilities of doing something different, living a different kind of life, maybe thinking differently maybe and I think there's something to be said for that it's something about being open being available to watch ourselves you know to just watch yourself and notice how you are how are you right now how how you're thinking is that real is that your own opinion or is it something that has been passed down to you is it an opinion that is societal so that you've just you're going along with everybody else around you or do you have the ability to think for yourself and I do realize as I said that that's a quite a controversial thing to say in a sense of do you have the ability to think for yourself is something that most people would say yes to they would say of course I do which means that everything pretty much that we do is a decision the prejudices we do that we do or that we have are a decision the limited thinking that we have is a decision we've decided to have, be limited the ritualistic thinking and maybe the rituals that we actually take part in is a choice we've decided to do that we're not doing it because that's how we've been raised to be or because it says to do it in a book so it's a choice so we can think for ourselves because the moment we have those rituals or we're doing those things and we're not thinking for ourselves and we're doing it because we've been told to do it then we're not thinking for ourselves and then that's the danger I guess because there's no healing occurring there there's just harm happening 
because healing can only really occur continuously and fill your body and mind and the ultimate healing is when you let go of those rituals and let go of that limited thinking and you open your mind up to possibilities possibilities of changing your life possibilities of helping other people change their lives and this is a very basic basic idea very basic simplistic thinking for my part and I realize that but you know what? It relieves a heck of a lot of stress. To just drop those prejudices. To just drop those ritualistic limited thinking, actions, behaviors, thoughts, to just drop them on the floor and to realize that you're your own person and at the same time you're connected to everybody else so we're all kind of one person in a sense uh, we all have free will and we are separate but we are connected by energy the scientists have you know that's a definite fact we are connected because we're all in the same house and that house is the planet earth you know unless you spend unless you know, basically unless you get a spaceship you can't leave the planet and practically every single person on this planet will never leave this planet you know physically um, leave the earth so this is our house this is our home we share the same home it's just we live in different rooms you could say different it's a big house admittedly but you could say different countries are different rooms but we still share the same air We should still share the same water really there's only a certain amount of water available on this planet so when it comes to things like war which again things like war the opposite word would be peace So war cannot lead to peace because it's the opposite thing. So maybe change the word peace also to healing or to heal
because that's what's needed. Also need to get quite a neighbours as well. But I'm going to leave that session now and just wonder what it would be like if we just as I said, change the word from peace to healing because that's what's needed with all those people that have been involved in war. It's not just peace they need, they need healing. So you can't have peace without healing. You can't have healing without peace. So we might as well just have it as one word, healing. which means war needs to end. Because ultimately, we're all connected. So how can there be war? How can it even happen, logically? Healing is the only way forward. You take care of yourselves and I'm going to go and have some breakfast. Bye.